What's up you guys, FSC Trucking. And it has been a while since I've made a brand new, all new trucking video for you guys. This load we're under right now is the first one I've done since I got back from Glamis. I met my sons out there in California. We brought my uh, older son Sean's Jeep and we brought my Razor. Matt flew in and we hung out out there. Uh, they landed in and, at, in and out of uh, San Diego Airport, I hung out in Glamis for uh, about two weeks. Then on our way back from Glamis, we stopped through Texas to see my parents, helped them out, then came home. And then, of course, I had a pile of work to do at the shop. So with that cutie intro logo, Now what in the world are we doing right now? Well, we just got through, we're heading east, we're on Interstate 90, we just got through Avon, Ohio. Very shortly we're going to be going through Cleveland, we're on Interstate 90. We're going to start dropping the first drops of today. Sadly I didn't film the drama from last night, but there was some drama last night. I was wanting to be in Buffalo, New York by now didn't happen but we're still gonna get unloaded this afternoon in Buffalo so we're golden the other two drops will come off tomorrow then we're supposed to reload in Connecticut and then come back those other two drops go off in Massachusetts so they should go boom boom and boom and turn around and head right back to Wisconsin the trouble is we got more work to do when we get back to Wisconsin I was wanting to try to keep moving until Christmas, but we'll see how fast they can fix the trailer because we had some problems with the trailer yesterday. It's a bit of a story. I'll try to explain it. I really don't have the time to like get out and get the Sony camera and start filming. I usually don't even wear this hoodie but it, it's got a big tear in it when I'm filming you know it just looks better if I have a better hoodie but I left one hoodie in my neighbor's house watch out vehicle on shoulder ahead I left one hoodie in my neighbor's house and the other good one that I have with me is still soaked so yeah so last night got up and got going and it was raining not really rain but like that misty wet nasty crap you gotta keep with the wipers you know and the trailer decided to start shorting out on me which was taking down the trailer marker lights not the truck but the trailer I'm like all right what's going on here ultimately i Kind of isolated where the problem is i just don't have the ability to fix it on the road but what do you do at night when you can't keep your marker lights on you can't just run like that you know a lot of guys you'll see they'll have no trailer lights they'll throw their four ways on it's a different circuit usually they're not shorted out in, in the uh in the turn signals which are your four ways Now, right as soon as I got my new shop, I started, matter of fact, back when I was doing the uh, meet and greet at Southern Michigan Railroad, I started having a flickering taillight problem in the trailer. And then I also, in that same issue, developed a flickering brake light. I found the flicker on the brake light because it would work when I was checking it stationary. But if you remember right, Jen followed me with the car. So Jen told me, he says, hey, sometimes when you hit the brake lights, they flash and flicker. But it was the same problem. It was a loose connector and a wiring harness in the back of the trailer. Now the very first thing I had done when I got back, that was right about the time we were moving the shop. Actually right before I moved the shop, 
first job I had done was take care of that wiring back there. So I cut that connector out of the harness. And YXL specialized doing it makes these ridiculously thick and big wiring harnesses. I don't know. But one thing they love to do is they don't make one wiring harness for one trailer. They make a bunch of little wiring harnesses and hook them together with a bunch of plugs. Which, in my opinion, are notorious for going bad. So I deleted the big plug and I rewired the trailer from the harness back to the tail lights of the trailer. Now what those consisted of were the license plate light, the, uh, the tail lights that shine absolutely towards the back, the two marker lights that shine towards the side of the trailer on the back, and then uh, your stop lights, your turn signals, and even my strobes. I have strobes back there for when I do oversized loads. But what I didn't mess with are the lights that I can extend outward for if I'm doing a wide load at night or any of the, any of the other lights on the trailer from there forward. I didn't need to. Everything worked fine. That was until yesterday. So I'm going down the road and then it starts raining and getting a little nasty. The trailer's bouncing around. Now also, it might have something to do with it. The trailer's been sitting for five weeks outside. Probably not, but it's part of the scenario, perhaps. On this truck right here, all these white buttons, those are circuit breakers. So if they pop, they'll stick out a little bit, maybe about a quarter inch. They just push it back in when it cools off. It'll be five, 10 seconds tops. You know, if, if it pops, it'll cool off. And you can see all of a sudden the trailer lights go dim and then they pop the breaker. Push the breaker in. Sometimes they'll come on and stay, and sometimes they won't. It gets worse in the water. Well, as it happens, right yesterday. So I pulled into the service plaza on the uh, Indiana Toll Road had a good ways to go I can't run all night with the four ways going so what do I do well let's try to solve the problem let's go find the short so the original thing I think of is start messing with what you last messed with maybe that's where something went wrong so I started moving I took all the lights out of the back of the trailer with a screwdriver and uh, move the wires around, try to pull any any wire away from where it might be rubbing the metal. I didn't see anything. Usually if they'll wear, wear thin, you'll see it, it'll leave a mark on the metal. I didn't see anything. But even moving the wires, that would create it to where there was no longer a short. So then I said, okay, let's just make damn sure it's in the trailer. So I unplugged the tractor from the trailer right between the headache rack and the fifth wheel. Laid my pigtail on the catwalk. Perfect. Everything's fine. Fuses are, the, the circuit breaker doesn't pop. You're good. Plug it back in. And pop, breaker goes out. So now I'm like, all right. Maybe, maybe it's in the, well, I thought was we can separate the trailer in half. Which half of the trailer is, uh, is the short in it? In other words, think about it. When I detach the top deck from the trailer, the gooseneck, you unplug the gooseneck from the tractor, 
but you also unplug the gooseneck from the lower deck of the trailer, curl your lines inside the hole, and then you drive the freight on and off if, if it's uh, that kind of freight, like a bulldozer or a big fire truck. So I unplugged the lower deck from the upper deck, you know, took the, unplugged the gooseneck from the trailer, plugged the gooseneck back into the tractor, and the lights came back on perfectly fine. Plug the trailer back into the gooseneck, boom, they go dim, pop, goes the breaker. Yeah, nice. So now we isolated what part of the trailer is the problem, at least. I was hoping that it was going to be in the top deck because those lights are easier to work on. There's only four in the front. There's eight total. Four on the front of the trailer, two facing forward, one facing each side, total of four. And then you have the pullout lights that have two in it, each one. Okay? But it's not the gooseneck, it's in the trailer itself. So I start messing with my wiring. I can't find it. I start pulling out all the other all the other lights along the side of the trailer. Next, I start taking out all the other lights along the side of the trailer. First place I started was the uh, the bigger turn signal lights off to the side. Took them out, and uh, that wiring is getting kind of nasty. The thing with this trailer is it's not original lights and some of the wiring has adapters to it. The original owner that I bought it from, he bought it brand new. But what he did was he took the original lights out and he put these chrome covered lights on, which had a different type of plug. So rather than change the plug on the harness, they put these adapter plugs on each and every one. And those wires are real thin, he zip tied them together to where they weren't rubbing on nothing, but the corrosion got to them real quick. There's no way to wash underneath these trailers, so. So we started messing with them, crap started falling apart. I kept hoping each one I took off, I would go replug the gooseneck to the bottom deck of the trailer, and each one, I, each time I would do that, I would plug it back in and hope that my problem would be solved. Nope. Each and every one every damn light in this trailer except for the ones on the top deck the gooseneck everyone with those exceptions i yanked out of the trailer completely like alf unplugged laying on it laying on the deck nothing couldn't get this damn short to go away so i said last ditch effort we're gonna try something here what if i ran a jumper wire just so i could go down the road at night get this trailer home to do it right in other words now i'm like i could drive in the daytime what do i do at night like how do how do you work on this trailer at a truck stop at night they can't get the trailer up in the air to get underneath it it's that high off the ground what do you do so what i decided to do was let's let's take a gamble here I know where I redid the wiring from the factory wire harness to the tail lights. What if I cut the wire right there, completely isolating the bottom deck of the trailer from the new wiring that I had installed for the tail lights? If I cut that wire, it's a black wire, and I run a jumper wire from the pigtail in the ghost deck. You know, the pigtail runs from the gooseneck to the bottom deck. We're we'll running a jumper wire from there. There's two wires that make the marker light circuit. One is black, one is brown. We'll run a jumper wire from there right to my tail lights. Granted, at that point, I'm only running tail lights on the very tail of the trailer. I don't have any side lights down the length of my deck. They're there, but they don't have to be there. Could just remove them legally. The only exceptions are where the current signals are, but 
you know, it's just a missing light. Point is, how do I prevent from being rear-ended at night? So I said, let me run that jumper wire. So I unplugged the pigtail and cut into the wiring harness. So I'm going to replace that section no matter what. Now I'm committed to it because I cut it. Trimmed away so I can split the loom, the wire loom. And then I cut the brown wire. I didn't do anything. The problem still remain. Okay, so it's black wire. Plugged in the black wire, or cut the black wire, plug the pigtail in, everything works fine. Except there's nothing, no lights on the trailer. Now, I'm at a rest area on the Indiana Toll Road. Those are not much more than mini marts at a gas station. Okay? I need about 35 feet of wire. Where the hell am I going to get 35 feet of wire? Yeah, that's a problem. They don't have any. They had one spool of 10 gauge wire. About 10 feet of it. I need three of those. Not enough. For whatever reason, they did have an extension cord. A standard extension cord. 25 feet extension cord. But again, not long enough. Why not even have been 25 feet? You know, an extension cord. Like you plug your vacuum cleaner into your wall and let it home or something. I had that. Well, it's wire. I cut the two ends off. And I split the three wires, hot, neutral, and ground. Split the three wires, put two of them together, wrapped them with black tape, took them from there, and ran it the length of the bottom deck of the trailer, in and out of the chain pockets. And I disconnected one of the side marker lights on the very back of the trailer on the driver's side. Then I cut the marker light circuit from the main harness of the trailer. That way I isolated two side marker lights, the clearance lights in the middle, the license plate light, and everything else in the back. Just the back. Powered it up, turned it on, blammo. Everything came on, breaker didn't pop, everything's bright, good. All right, let's get down the line. So now, in the belly of the trailer, Six inches off the ground where I can't reach, you can't even see it. This is short. Somewhere between the pigtail plug to the gooseneck, all the way to the back. Goes up over the rear, rear wheels of the trailer. Somewhere in there is the short. I've yet to find it. By the time I got done, I was absolutely soaked to the bone. Laying on the ground, standing in the rain. Not a fun day. So now, the plan is to get out there to New York, unload, take a break, and then tomorrow we'll kick off the last of the stuff in Massachusetts and go to Connecticut. by getting up at 1 in the morning, getting fuel and then getting gone. Oops. Hello there, Smokey Bear. Got him a four-wheeler. As far as the Glamis trip goes, it was an awesome trip. Had a great time. Learned a lot. Filmed a bunch. Oh, such a fun time. All the footage from that is on FSC Speed Shop. That's my other channel, one of my other channels. Oh! 
speak in other channels. By now, should be. If not, it'll be real soon. FSC Truck Shop, I've got a new one up. Because as soon as I got back from Glamis, I did a bunch of work on my trailer. Tires and brakes. More tires and brakes as I had them off. Who knew I'd have wiring problems in a few days after I got all that work done? Who knew? Watch out, vehicle on shoulder ahead. By the way, that work will be on FSC Truck Shop. Glamour stuff will be on FSC Speed Shop. things I wanted to mention quick is I am starting to look back into getting involved into the merch game again I had a meeting last week with people that do my shirts I have a I have a themed Orwell shirt in mind themed Orwell shirt a themed Orwell shirt meaning that it's a theme shirt, it might be a limited run, or I'll sell them until people quit buying them. It'll be, and they'll have uh, me, and it'll have Orwell, and it will have a theme. The theme is, well, well let's just say I'm from New Jersey. But with that, that's the theme, somewhat. It'll be me and Orwell come up with a new internet URL for where you can get the merch. I can mention the freight over hauling. Didn't have the chance to put a camera towards the back or do an intro like I do, so piece we're dropping off. Got you two pieces. So I'll have to some saws in a crate, like metal cutting saws. They're crated and tarped. So two of those come off the buffalo. The other two pieces are generators. One a trailer mount generator you can tow behind a truck. And the other one is a standalone unit that usually hooks up Police to like reported ahead. Thank you. Usually hooks up to like a natural gas type system. Looking for looking under your car for exhaust. 
for catalytic converters. is I suppose when it comes to fixing my trailer I've got a nice shop as long as the trailer is empty I can get under it I just have to jack it up put it up on ramps jack up the front end should be just fine police reported ahead well, it's nice to have a nice warm shop to work in don't have to mess with it outside nice if I could just isolate the problem and then just patch it or wrap it but I have a feeling I'm going to wind up having to replace the whole harness years of driving. If it ever was open, I've never been in it. Either way, they certainly haven't used it in forever. 